Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of our Mortal Kombat franchise uh, documentary. I'm delighted this evening to be joined by the one and only Shane Warren Jones, who played the role of Cyrax in uh, Mortal Kombat Legacy. And I suppose, uh, Shane, 2011 Mortal Kombat Legacy uh, came out uh, nearly a decade now. Does it almost feel that long since you were portraying a Cyrex and shooting in terms of Mortal Kombat Legacy? Yes. It, 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 the short answer is yes. It feels like a very long time ago. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I'm honored to be a part of you know the mythology in some form or fashion, and uh, yeah, it just feels like it was ages ago because it, it kind of was. It was a decade ago. And I suppose, uh, Shane, uh, going back in the early sort of nineties, in terms of uh, were you aware of the sort of Mortal Kombat? Um, universe growing up uh, in terms of did you play any of the computer games at the arcades did you watch any of the original movies in the cinemas in 1995 or 1997 yeah. and yeah. uh, had you a good sort of background knowledge of uh, Mortal Kombat I wouldn't say I had a great background knowledge of Mortal Kombat uh, my my introduction to Mortal Kombat was back when there were such things as arcades for those of you who don't know there were okay. things called arcades where people went and paid money to play video games and well, lost a lot of money playing video games via quarters. But uh, at the time, it was either Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat were the two uh, major ones that were, you know, glo I would say globally well known. Um, so I remember Mortal Kombat in that sense, and I was terrible at it. But then I remember playing it on the Super on my Super Nintendo back when it, you know, in the early '90s when it eventually transferred onto, you know, consoles. And then Mortal Kombat 2 came out. And I believe Cyrus started in that one. I believe that's where he was uh, developed, and uh, it was just a, a new experience, you know, watching these these getting to play these characters in a, the tournament setting that was not as PG thirteen as you know the Street Fighter franchise. Not to knock that franchise, but it was just an interesting, fascinating place to be. And then you know, watching the movie that blew my mind because you know watching i was always a big fan of the shaw brothers and and you know uh the old kung fu movies but getting to see uh the tournament arc play out with characters that i knew in a way that was faithful to the mythology for me was was very exciting yeah and i suppose shane you mentioned that in terms of uh the sort of PG sort of that Street Fighter had and in terms of uh, Mortal Kombat. And Mortal Kombat was probably the only out of the three historic fighting games over the last 30 decades, 30 years, uh, the last three decades there have been Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter and Tekken. And uh, Mortal yeah. Kombat has been the only one that has really transcended onto the big screen in terms of movie uh, success and in terms of TV sort of series uh, where Street Fighter tried once and it's, they failed uh, in terms of, and it sort of frightened uh, Capcom going back and uh, making further movies. And then Tekken had the same sort of experience. Why do you think Mortal Kombat sort of work so well uh, in terms of Mortal Kombat Legacy and Conquest were really renowned TV shows and I was supposed to force uh, Mortal Kombat movie was a huge success. I think, I mean, that's a very hard question, but I think to be perfectly honest with you, it's really hard to, it's like the curse of the video game, right? When you're trying to turn it into a movie. When you have people play the video games because it's, it's what, less than 15 minute rounds and you get to pick your character and you just go at it and you just, you get to, you don't really, you're not really too enthralled in the backstory versus, versus the moves. And when you translate that onto film and try to turn it into a narrative, it becomes very, very, very difficult because there's so many characters and people want to see all of the characters in there. So when you, you miss something, when you focus on only a small group of characters and you leave out all this other mythology. So I think where Tekken and Street Fighter had a problem probably is just nobody really knew the full backstory of the characters. And I think Mortal Kombat, I mean, don't quote me on this, but had the opportunity to really expand on the characters via the TV show, via the cartoons, um, to the point where at least if you were interested in these video games as a kid, you could go, and even in the comics, right? There were there was, I think, Edu did have a comic series in the 90s that kind of had Mortal Kombat in it. Um, after a while, you get to you get to build up a love for the characters, so that when you do eventually go into the movies, you're the one bringing all the backstory, and you don't have to waste all that time or spend all that time 
you know, going through the minutia of this is where this person was, this is where the person is now, this is where they're going. You kind of knew all that ahead of time because you played the video games. And I don't think that uh, Tekken translated over to an international audience in that same fashion, um, the same way that Mortal Kombat did. And I suppose, uh, Shane, I'll bring you on now to uh, your role in uh, Mortal Kombat Legacy, uh, playing uh, Cyrax. And Mortal Kombat Legacy, it was a web series. Uh, it came before the likes of uh, uh, Netflix Netflix and Amazon Prime. It yeah, just sort yeah. of missed you that. Too. And if, if it got on that gravy train, I suppose it would have been looking at sort of four or five sorts of seasons. Yeah. Uh, but uh, tell me, how did the opportunity come about for you to get cast in the role as Cyrex? You appeared in episode nine as uh, Cyrex and Sector. Well, it was a it was a number of different things. It was um, I remember when um, I was training in martial arts at the time with a bunch of other strong professionals. Um, when Kevin released the online version of the, the teaser trailer with. Uh, Michael J. White and uh, uh, Matt Mullins and, uh, you know, and Latif Crowder. Um, and I had, they were shooting in Vancouver at the time, or they were planning on shooting in Vancouver at the time. And I happened to be represented by somebody over on that side. So a combination of, of getting to, to understand and, and how that audition process worked because um, I was still fairly green to working on film at the time when I actually booked that that project. So it was a combination of, of I would say, probably dumb luck <laughs> and uh, being in the right place at the right time. And um, lucky enough to be having my stuff put through by Larnell, who was doing the fight choreography at the time. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Shane, in terms of Mortal Kombat Legacy, it sort of set the framework in terms of moving Mortal Kombat. Uh, Mortal Kombat Conquest probably laid the ground in terms of moving it more to an adult sort of rating in terms yeah. of the sort of thing. But you followed on in Mortal Kombat Legacy to great success in terms of your uh, mini episodes. It was almost like a mini sort of story as such. And, Tell me, you mentioned about your martial arts sort of background and in terms of Mortal Kombat uh, sort of uh, legacy, well, how did that sort of play out for you in terms of shooting that episode? Well, you know, to be perfectly honest, I luckily didn't have to do a lot of the, the martial arts in the episode. I was I was doubled by a fantastic uh, stuntman named uh, Danny Graham. Um, and I believe Kim Doe and... Uh, um, was playing uh, Sector at the time as well. I was doing the martial arts with Sector at the time. So, but I do believe that Kevin wanted somebody who had some kind of martial arts background. And I happened to be, um, to have studied Kung Fu and uh, Shotokan Karate a um, long time ago. So I was happened to kind of luck into it. And uh, you sort of, your role was alongside Peter Shinoka who played a sort of Sector in the TV, TV series and what was did you find uh, working with him because obviously the success of year series was depending on year interaction and forming that sort of bond uh, that sort of brotherhoods that turned into a bit of sort of back sort of hatred uh, towards each other uh, towards the end in the terms of the sector Cyrex relationship well, I, you know, the first thing, it was funny, I love Peter Shinkota. You know, he's a, a, a good friend of mine to this day. We still keep in touch, which is wonderful. Um, he's one of my many friendships that I that I made on that that I cherish very much so. Um, but I, I met him, the first time I met him was the first day we shot. So there was really no background in terms of getting to know him beforehand. Is is We just jo dove in and we kind of vibed off each other and it just seemed to work. And we became friends afterwards. And I suppose, uh, Shane, in terms of uh, having that background of Mortal Kombat, and when you came in and you saw the legacy and you heard you were going to be playing as uh, Cyrex, and obviously you probably know about the sort of robotic sort of nature in terms of Cyrex. How did that sort of play out? And were you uh, taken back in terms of what they were able to sort of create in terms of their robotic sort of makeup in terms of Cyrex and what they're able to do for you in terms of that TV series? You know, I, I was floored by this, by the special effects and the CGI that they put in afterwards in post uh, production work to the transformation sequence. Uh, it got me so hyped, but just being on, 
on set and watching uh, Tim Mann, who played Hydro, and Kim Doer and, and Danny Graham just do the fight scenes got me so amped up. What really drew me to the role essentially was, I believe there was, uh, you can ask Kevin about this, is that there was a, uh, the duality of having Cyrax and Hydro be actually twin brothers. There was a, there was a storyline about that that was involved, that when I first got the role, that there was uh, Cyrax and Hydro were twin brothers who were adopted and grew up together. And then Hydro essentially was removed from uh, uh, went missing and then was a part of this program, which is why you see him later. So I, what really interested me in the role was the idea of, of somebody who, who joined an organization to, that he believed in and was like, you know, a diehard to the bone, to the core uh, believer and having it morph into something that wasn't quite what he agreed with initially and having his soul essentially taken away to be part of this program. That to me was the interesting part as, a, as an actor and as a performer because that was that gave me something to play. Yeah, and I suppose uh, Shane, in terms of uh, Mortal Kombat uh, Legacy, it had mm. a great sort of reaction in terms of the seasons that were involved in it, and it was almost you almost felt that if it came out, I know when it came out in two thousand and eleven, it was a web series. It was a very sort of successful web series, but in terms of did it almost felt like it came that bit too early? Uh, in one sense, that if it came in 2015 or 16 with Netflix, the likelihood is you could have been looking at four or five seasons because it was such it went down such a treat and so the figures and the attended the viewership of it was outstanding in terms of what it was for, for a web series as such. So definitely, I imagine there was an awful lot of scope to to do run an awful lot more because she only had touched the foundations on each episode that she yeah. ranked. Right. Well, I, I you know, it, it's that's a that's a it's it's a balance, right? Because I, on the one hand, it came out before Netflix and even before Instagram and all these other things that that went on. So there was from a publicity standpoint, it it probably would resonate a lot more now, you know, and, and because because the games are so po- are a lot more popular. Now. I would argue that they're even more popular now than they were back in the '90s. Right, so because of all the stuff that's been coming out and releasing, and, and the, the 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 video game upgrades and the, the graphics and everything, it's getting more brutal, and it's just more widely known. But at the time when it came out in 2011, um, with YouTube and the social media stuff being very new, um, to my knowledge, the Mortal Kombat was on the downslope at the time. So I think when Kevin released it when he did is what actually reinvigorated the series to be what it is, you know, um, or at least it uh, helped with that. So what I would be, would it probably do better now? Sure. But, you know, it had to, it had to be in, uh, what it was at the place and time that it was in order for it to be what it is now, <laughs> you know? And I suppose, uh, Shane, the reason why we're doing this uh, documentary to celebrate Mortal Kombat, I suppose, is nearly roughly uh, 20 years now, really up in 30 years, I suppose, it's coming. But we have the release, the third movie is on its way in terms of the franchise. Uh, The last movie was back in 1997. The new movie coming out is going to feature the likes of uh, Louis Tan uh, and amongst others. uh, get back yeah. to its sort of roots down the lines of a dark night a joker they're saying uh, in terms of uh, that sort of darkness that sort of grim sort of nature and really i suppose it's touching the real roots of Marvel combat because Marvel combat i suppose was all about the gore and the sort of that sort of adults teams that ran through Marvel combat as well so i suppose in terms of what they could do in the 90s i suppose it was more PG and Tori Do you expect this uh, Mortal Kombat to be more graphic in nature? Oh, absolutely. I, I think I think the way we shoot fight scenes now as a whole is different. Hmm. I think the, what what is palpable to an audience now is different because you know I each each Mortal Kombat has got successively more <laughs> gory and more brutal. Um, and the graphics have gotten better. You know, you have the PS5 and the Xbox and all those things. So I think people are expecting um, a little bit more intensity. And you have uh, people who've worked on show- on movies like The Raid, you know, working on in those spaces. So I think the expectation is, you know, gritty, bare bones, 
uh, fighting. That's that's what the platoon is in Mortal Kombat to see, you know, with with hopefully a great story. Yeah, and I suppose uh, Shane, the last question before I let you go, and probably the hardest one I'll ask you in terms of let's pretend there was a Mortal Kombat sort of dictionary, a sort of encyclopedia, and they put your character Cyrex. Uh, in the dictionary and they asked you Shane Warren Jones having portrayed the character Cyrex to write those two sentences uh, to describe him uh, what would you like those two sentences to read I would like I would like them to read uh, an honorable soul in search of redemption an honorable soul in search of redemption uh, Shane Warren Jones, an absolute pleasure talking to you today in this episode, uh, celebrating Mortal Kombat, uh, celebrating as uh, Cyrex, and celebrating your role as Mo uh, Cyrex in Mortal Kombat Legacy. Uh, we wish you all the best in your future endeavors and um, in this current uncertain time to you and your loved ones. Uh, stay safe, uh, stay well, and uh, a prosperous 2021. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. Fight.